Hey everyone, in this tutorial I will show you how to create a new item. Uh, so this is the end result. There is a new tome item here that can be picked up and added to a slot. It has a description um, and when it is used you increase the stats of a character. Uh, so we see that the stats here uh, and it says that it increases uh, intelligence and strength by 5 and when it's used, if you keep an eye on these stats, strength and intelligence are increased and there's also a small effect that plays. Uh, so now I will demonstrate how you can create this new item. So here we are in the fresh DCT project and the first thing I'm gonna do is to open up the arena map which is useful for testing stuff like items and monsters. So for the purposes of this tutorial I have imported a new mesh and a new icon. So in meshes here and items I have a tome mesh which looks like this and there's a download link in the description below and this is from the same asset pack of items where all the other items uh, in DCT are taken from which are made by Quaternius and you can find links to all of those in the uh, description of uh, DCT on the marketplace page uh, and he has also provided icons so in textures and items uh, we can find this tome icon as well uh, so you can use these and download them below or if you don't care about those and just want to see how the code works just use any uh, icon or uh, item mesh uh, for this demonstration. So one thing you should know about DCT is that it is highly data driven. Uh, that means that a lot of the stuff in this toolkit, items, monsters, spells, etc. are defined within data tables uh, that are easy to extend and uh, modify. Uh, so here within the data folder you will find all of the data tables uh, that do, uh, define a lot of the functionality in this toolkit. Uh, so for this tutorial we are interested of course in the DT uh, that's data table items uh, table here. So here you see all the items that are currently included uh, in the toolkit. Uh, so if you want to make a new one, often it makes sense to find some uh, one of these items that is similar to what you're already making and then uh, making a duplicate. Uh, but for the purposes of the tutorial, we'll start from scratch. Uh, so then you can click add to add a new row uh, to the items table. And here we see that we have a lot of data that we can modify. Uh, so first we want to choose a mesh for our item. So we can search for Tome, the one we imported, and an icon. So again, a Tome. Um, and I can show how this looks in the game uh, as I add more stuff to this. So let's just start with these basics here. And if I save and go back, and then I want to add this Tome item to the map. Uh, so then in blueprints and items we have the BP item uh, base uh, blueprint. So as I've mentioned before all of these other blueprints here are just the, uh, child actors of this item uh, with the value of, uh, let's see, uh, this data table um, set to that particular item. Um, so you can achieve the same effect by just choosing the item here. So uh, yeah we have this new uh, tome, it's not called tome that I should change. So the row at least, let's change it to tome and save. And then if we click here, we should be able to choose tome. And you will see that it is spawned in our map as an item. So now if we press play, you will see that we will be able to go and pick this up. Uh, it can't be added into any of the slots because we haven't defined this behavior, but we can add it in the inventory. And you will see that it's called Tome, and uh, then simply the description is Stats. So uh, we obviously need to add some more data to this Tome for it to work. So going back to our data table, we want to add some more data uh, to our Tome. Uh, so let's just take this one line at a time. So first we have the description uh, in the base toolkit. I'm mostly using this for flavor text so we can add some description like uh, filled with arcane uh, knowledge 
um, and then we have a friendly name. Uh, so by default, if there's no friendly name uh, defined, then when finding a name for this item, when looking at its description, uh, the toolkit will look at the row name where the item is at. But these are limited uh, in how they can be written. You can't have spaces, for instance. Uh, so if you want to have something that is not constrained uh, in such a way, you can add it here. So we can say, call this Tomo Knowledge. Bit redundant with the description, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, now we can see how this looks in our game. Let's see, picking up the tome, we can see that the name is Tome of Knowledge, and we have the flavor text on the bottom here. Now I skip the type enum here. Uh, so this is an enum that defines what type of item this is, uh, and it is referenced by. Uh, the slot widgets and um, other parts uh, of the toolkit uh, to define different behaviors. So inventory means that this is something that can only be placed in the inventory, not in the hands or something like this. Then you have, you know, head, chest, legs and so on, which means that they can be placed uh, in these slots um, on the character. Uh, so for instance, if I choose head here and play, uh, then we will see that we can place this tome on our character's heads. And here it gets a bit more interesting. Uh, so for these uh, various stat lines here, you have the equip stat, effect stats and cost stats. If you add any stats to these, um, like to the effect stats say, and you add the intelligence, we want uh, the effect of this item to affect intelligence, and we want intelligence to be increased by five. Uh, but this does nothing in itself. This is used, um, uh, this will be referenced in the effect blueprints that this item uses. Um, but just adding this does nothing. So we have to define an effect blueprint. Uh, that will know what to do with these stats. So the effect blueprint is defined here and you can choose any uh, blueprint of the BP effect class uh, which defines uh, what this item does when used. Um, so for instance the healing potion effect it looks at uh, what is placed in the effect stats and then it heals uh, these um, heals these abilities or stats uh, if they have been damaged. Now this is uh, close to what we want, but uh, healing potion, it caps off how much this stat is increased to uh, the base value of that stat. So if we want to increase it beyond that level, we want to, we have to create a new ability, uh, a new effect blueprint for this. So we can find the effect blueprints in blueprints and effects and here we can find all of the effects and we know that we want to create something that's similar to the healing potion effect so we can create a duplicate of this and then let's call it BP effects uh, stat increase uh, so let's see what's going on here so we have this use effect interface event which is uh, called when uh, this item's effect is used, generally when it is uh, right-clicked. And you can see that first it calls the parent use effect. So this is calling this same event on the parent blueprint, which is BP effect. And you generally want to do this uh, for items. Uh, we can see what it does. If we look in the parent blueprint, we can see that the use effect event here, it sets up some references. It uh, plays a sound when using the item, if anything is defined in the data table for this item. Um, it spawns a particle emitter if one is defined in the data and so on. So this uh, is stuff that probably a lot of different items will want to use. Uh, so therefore it is held here in the parent. You can, so for those who don't know, anything that is defined um, in a parent can be overridden, uh, overwritten, or you can but you can also call then uh, this parent function. Um, and then you can add your own stuff after this if you want. So let's see what happens in the event graph here. Uh, so first we find uh, the uh, healing potion in the item table. 
uh, using this item name here uh, and then we break uh, this uh, struct that is found within the data table. So essentially this gives us all of the values that are defined on this line or all of the values here. You can see this if we expand this you can find all of these um, variables. We can see that the healing potion it finds these values in effect stats uh, and it loops over all of the stats and uh, for each of those it finds the uh, float value that is stored within the map. All of these are maps with where the key is um, a stat and the value is a float. Uh, so it loops over all of these keys for a healing potion there will just be one uh, item here which will be health and it will have a certain value uh, which defines how much this healing potion heals and then it uh, gets the activating playing char player character which is one of the references that are set up here uh, which holds a reference to the player character that is activating this item uh, and for that player character it modifies the stat uh, by this amount and it's capped that means that it can't go below zero or it can't go above the base stat which is not what we want uh, for this new effect blueprint. So instead we're going to get a very similar function also from the activating play character which is called modify stat simply and uh, we choose this one and we want to modify uh, the stat that is uh, defined in our uh, keys here, the specific stat tied to this data table. Uh, we want to change the base stat, uh, so we want to change the uh, stat itself, not have like a temporary modifier or something. Uh, and we want to add to the stats. Uh, we wish to update derived stats uh, since we are now uh, modifying intelligence, we want mana to be updated as well when we modify this stat. Uh, we input the value here and it can be negative, we can keep this as false, it won't matter since we will be adding anyway. So with all of that set up we need to make sure in our data table that we are using our new effect blueprint. So we're using the stat increase effect blueprint and we have already added uh, in the effect stats here that we're incre increasing intelligence. Well to demonstrate I can add another stat here so let's see we're increasing strength as well also by five and now if we click play and if we equip this item here we can try to use it by right clicking it uh, but we have to enable use from any slot in the item data to be able to do this. So for this item then we need to equip it in one of our usable slots here first. Then we can look at the stats. Strength is 14, intelligence is 14 and when we use this book we see that both increase to 19. Okay so far so good. Uh, but using this item it doesn't give the player much feedback so we probably want some sound and some effects uh, so we can fix this in our data table. Going down further down in the data here we can yeah we can set this to be able to use this from any slot and so that we can use it from our inventory as well and then let's add a use sound so what would be a good sound here um, I think that the uh, yeah, shield of faith should be fine we can use the Q and we have no hit sound that is more for weapons and then we can add a particle uh, I don't have that many to choose from but let's place an explosion particle when we use this item and if we now try to use it now we should be able to use it from this slot and yeah there's a sound and there's an explosion at our feet we can offset where this uh, particle starts by adding to the spawn offset here so I can increase this to set it 80 higher say and yeah sometimes by the way when modifying the data here you might have to move the items to get it to update to get the construction scripts updating that's true for some of the data and not the, uh, this particular data here but just be aware that that is something that can happen. Um, so if we place it here now we can see that the explosion is higher up. 
One strange thing you might have noticed is the description of this item, which says heals 5 intelligence and 5 strength. So this is obviously wrong. So it's getting the description from the healing potion. So this is a description that bases the description on the stats of this um, of the effect blueprint that it's using, uh, or the stats of the data and how this is described is defined in the effects blueprint. So we need to update the effect blueprint of our stat increase uh, so that this description is appropriate. So if we go back to our effect blueprint, you can see here that we have an interface function which is. Um, no, I mean uh, this regular function, the get effect description. This is a function that is defined in the parent blueprint in BP effect. So this is a general Unreal Engine tip. If you don't know it, you can override any function in a parent blueprint in the child blueprint uh, by clicking override here. And then you'll get this function on the side that you can modify. Very useful. So a lot of stuff going on here, but basically uh, this effect then gets the effect stats, loops over them and builds a string based on the stats and their values um, and then adds this description to the uh, generic description defined in the parent effect blueprint to create the final description. We can see here that this local description starts with the word heals, so we can change this to increases and for this I think that should be sufficient so if we look at this now increases 5 intelligence and 5 strength that's good enough for the purposes of this tutorial and that I think covers the most important bits uh, so uh, you can look through all of these items here, recommend looking at them and the effect blueprints to figure out how they work, how they're referencing stuff in this uh, data table here. Um, you will also see in the data table, uh, in data here, that many other things like monsters, classes, um, spells and so on are defined in similar types of uh, data tables. In fact, the powers um, data table uses the exact same struct uh, as the one for items. So powers can be uh, can be made the exact same way as items do. So after uh, learning how to manipulate this, you can also do the same thing with powers. I will make uh, future videos going into adding new classes or adding new monsters uh, and so on, but uh, they build on similar principles. So you should be able to use um, much of what you learned here for that purpose as well. Uh, so I hope you guys found this uh, tutorial useful and I'll see you in the next one.